So the entire point of this video is kind of a spoiler for the Crown Tundra DLC, so if you don't want to get spoiled, click away right now and either go watch a playthrough of it or play through it yourself. And I encourage you to play through it, because it's actually a ton of fun. And one of the reasons I had so much fun with it was because of the new designs of the legendary Pokemon in the game. The Galarian legendary birds are a prime example of why regional variants are so great. Taking the original concepts, keeping them familiar, but giving them a new typing twist, and actually putting in way more personality than they had in their original design. Granted, that personality is just very angry, but that's still personality. And while I know the Reggies are kind of silly, I actually really like them for that. They actually have really creative ideas, and even if you don't like them, you can at least say that they're memorable. Even Calyrex, who I had my reservations about before the DLC came out, really, really grew on me with the good characterization and very likable animations that they gave him. Look at his smile! Look at his beans! They're so cute! But there were actually two other legendary Pokémon that weren't revealed before release, and... well... While Calyrex's striking design became more likable, these two Pokémon had a very opposite problem where their designs didn't really push as far as they could have. So why are these Pokémon so simplified compared to the rest of the new legendary designs? And what about their designs could be improved so that they're more memorable in their own right? Well, that's why we're here! Let's see how we can improve Blastrier and Spectrier by looking at their core concepts and their role within the story. When I say concept, I mean, what did the designers want to convey to the audience when they were designing these Pokémon? This is an important part of every form of art, and Pokémon does it with every single Pokémon design that they create. Yes, even with the ones that you don't like. So, what do Glastrier and Spectrier convey? Um, white ice horse that is bulky, and ghost horse that is slim and spooky. Okay, that's oversimplifying them, but you get what I mean, right? They just seem to be horses with their typing smacked onto them. Not to say that there haven't been Pokémon like this before, Rapidash is a perfect example. But, considering Rapidash just got a Galarian form, and it's also just sort of a horse, and then the Swords of Justice were added in this DLC that also include Keldeo, who is also a horse, with a much more defined silhouette outside of just being a horse. There's nothing wrong with simplicity in a design, it's just that they have too much competition that are also very focused on the aspect of being a horse. But is being a horse the only thing that they have going for them? Absolutely not. Blastrier and Spectre are both steeds to the King of Bountiful Harvests, aka Calyrex. The main plot of the DLC is to help Calyrex reunite with his loyal steed so he can regain his former power. Throughout the Crown Tundra, you can find pedestals scattered all over that detail the history of Calyrex and its loyal steed, describing the steed as a ruffian who would pillage and steal crops from the villages. In fact, Calyrex gained its title as king from taming this ruffian and making it steed. And this negative framing of them is very pronounced throughout the story, from their behavior to others' descriptions of them, and even in their Pokédex entries. Spectrier's isn't outright aggressive, only stating that it absorbs life from passing sleeping creatures, and that it craves silence and solitude. But Glastrier's? Glastrier emits intense cold from its hooves. It's also a belligerent Pokémon. Anything it wants, it takes by force. This Pokédex entry has led many to believe that these two horses are based off of two of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, of horse being the white and black horses. The white horse representing conquest, and the black horse representing famine, though Spectrier could also be influenced by the Kelpie, a mythical creature taking the shape of a black horse to lure people into lakes. Both of these possible inspirations are very interesting in their own right, and I highly encourage you to go read more about them, and they certainly leave a lot of room for the imagination to play with character designs. Looking at the Kelpie inspirations, it would have been really interesting for Spectrier to be a ghost and water type, although I think they didn't go with that because of game mechanics which are kind of important because, you know, it's a game. But typings are also very important to a Pokémon's theming, especially with legendaries. When you look at their typing chart, Calyrex has a disadvantage against both horses, but why is that? Well, the point of the story is for him to regain his lost power, so of course he would be underpowered. That is most certainly true, but there's also a little bit more to it than that. Calyrex is a grass psychic type that is known for bringing a bountiful harvest and the challenge he must overcome is taming a horse that would normally ravage towns for their crops. One in the form of ice and cold that would make it impossible to grow any actual food, 
and one in the form of a spirit that is near a cemetery. And one of the things that keeps crops from growing is also disease and death, which can be brought on by ice and cold and then feed into each other. We've got our core story theme, but we also have some inherent limitations because of game mechanics. The biggest reason why these two are likely so simplified is because they aren't the stars of the show, Calyrex is. So, how do we keep their designs simple while still expanding on those themes that we just discussed in their designs? Some rules I set for myself with these designs were, they can't have anything outlandish on their backs that would obstruct Calyrex riding them, and they still had to have their pelts visible because that's how Calyrex identifies them during the story. I started off with Glastrier, who I felt was the easier of the two just because it had a more defined personality. That sort of aggressive nature is something that I could easily convey through something like a very confrontational pose and a sort of angry, sort of aggressive sneer. And that sort of aggressive behavior made it very easy to also draw from like war horses because, you know, aggressive horse, kind of an easy leap to make. So I took the inspiration from the ice surrounding its hooves and basically made sort of a very rough sort of self-made armor type chest plate for it. I didn't want to go like too intricate with it, as in like I didn't want to have like just armor that was made out of ice was like, you know, a chest plate. But with the design on its hooves, it's made a very easy sort of draw from so it could have like this sort of self-made sort of protection that is supposed to be armor without being just armor armor like it was wearing an outfit. And eventually that led me to the idea of maybe it could be wearing some type of saddle. Because again, I didn't want anything to obstruct, but if there was some type of protection on its back, why not put it in the shape of some type of saddle that Calyrex could actually ride? After all, that is the entire point of it, so why not have that incorporated into their designs? And for Glassrier in particular, it seemed like it would be something very interesting for an interpretational aspect. One thing about Reggie Alecki that I liked is that those electrical tape type things are something that humans put on him so that it would be something to restrain it. But when I looked at it, I thought it was something that was actually holding him together. And that's one of the key things of character design. Sometimes you'll have a character design that has a specific aspect, and one person can look at it and see something very specific, and one person can look at it and see something entirely different. So when I was designing this, I had this clear idea in mind that maybe it could be a saddle for Calyrex to ride. Or maybe it's something that Lathrier put on itself as a way to prevent Calyrex from riding it. Because again, Calyrex is a grass type, weak to ice. And maybe because of its belligerent attitude, Glastrier really does not like being controlled or bound to Calyrex in that sort of way. It wants to go off and do its own thing and just continue to take as it pleases. I also bulked up its tail a little bit. I had this very clear idea of like maybe it can be sort of like an icy mace that it swings about, sort of protecting itself from the back in that way and maybe using it as a weapon. And now I'm just thinking that would be an interesting twist on Tail Whip. If a Pokemon has something that is on its tail that it can use as a weapon, like it can actually do damage. Now that would be interesting. Another interesting thing about their original designs is that they only seem to have facial features on one side of their face and they sort of mirror each other, like Spectre's is on its left face and then Glaster's has features on its right. It's an interesting design choice that I sort of wanted to expand on. So I basically took that sort of featureless side that almost looked like it was a mask made of ice and basically expanded it to where it was expanding and jutting out a little bit more off the side of its face. Sort of, again, playing into that sort of sharp confrontational aspect. Maybe making people wonder if there was actually a face underneath at all or if it was just non-existent. Also, you may have noticed that I'm using the game model instead of the official artwork for color reference. The reason for that is because at the time that I was recording these, the official artwork hadn't been released yet, so I was just working with what I had.
Spectre's design was a little bit harder to work with because I didn't really have a defining personality trait like Glastrier did. But I knew that it didn't have the same outward aggression that Glastrier did, so I posed it in more of a less confrontational pose. Similar to how its official artwork and the home model already pose it, but with head lowered a little bit, I wanted to give it the sort of feel of like, maybe the viewer stumbled upon this ghostly figure as it was grazing the grass and this ghostly figure noticed it from behind. I didn't make many major changes to either his body type, but one thing I did do was I changed Spectre's tail a lot just to distance itself from other horses that have already been Pokemon. Again, like Rabidash and Keldeo. I don't know if the last unicorn is the thing that popularized this sort of long, sweeping tail for unicorns of the sort, or if there is some sort of historical element that I just have not heard about that inspired the last unicorn, which then fed into other sort of depictions of that. But it is something that I really like when I see it, and it's one of those things that I kind of wanted to include to just change up its silhouette a little bit. And with it being sort of this ghostly figure, I figured using it in this design would probably be the most appropriate. Another element I also wanted to carry over from Glastrier is, is that sort of saddle element. Whereas Glastrier had a saddle made of ice, I figured that I would have something like that. But Becker doesn't really have anything that it can use as a saddle in that sort of same sense. It's easy to make that out of ice, but what do you do with something that's ghosty as far as that goes? So I sort of defaulted to this houndoom type rib element. I don't know if I'm happy with it, but it's what I went with just to sort of get it out there. And then once I had that, I also included little segments that are of a similar material on the tail, sort of continuing that bone spine type of just general type of skeletal feel. Again, I don't know if I'm actually happy with it or not, but it's just something that I had to go with because I was struggling with other ideas, I admit it. It's one of those things where I was struggling with concepts because I didn't want to go too dark with it, so I was trying to balance out what would still be kid-friendly in terms of what we might see in the game, but would still carry over that feel of almost malnourished or haggard type feel. So I slimmed up its already very slender body type, and then I figured that as far as conveying that in-game, I don't think there are a lot of ways to do that while still keeping it, you know, PG. In my head I went with a lot of concepts, like maybe having some sort of like rotting sort of plant life, or maybe even like very tiny withered wings on the side, sort of calling back to that sort of like deathly theme but I didn't want to include anything that might hint to like a separate typing because I didn't want to imply that it was any type other than ghost because I felt like that would confuse a player if they saw it. So in the end I just had to keep pushing the ghost angle and the best way I found to do that was just with the blatancy of bone and skeletal structure. Again, I'm sure there are ways to do it that are a bit more creative than what I went with and I encourage you to tell me them in the comments, but I just Sometimes you just gotta get something out there to figure out whether it works or not, and I think for what it is, it works. I'm definitely happy with it in terms of pushing more elements than the original design did, but I still think that this could be improved a lot. I also added some elements of either like mane or fluff or whatever you would consider those flowing bits of drapery on the back, just sort of as a, again, sort of equal and opposite sort of comparison with Glastrier with how it has its chest armor, I figured maybe some classic drapery of some sort on Spectrier would be good. Again, I didn't want any of them to actually be wearing a piece of clothing, but that is how I ended up creating that sort of element in the design, which Spectrier lends a lot to very flowy type spectral things in general anyways. And again, the featureless side of its face I also covered in this sort of spectral mist.
And there we have it! Two redesigns of Glass Rear and Spec Rear. What do you guys think? I feel like I still could have pushed them a little bit more, and to be honest, I could have spent like a whole lot more time with concept stages. I didn't want to have that part of the video drag out too long just because there would have been like so many myths and legends and so on and so forth that we could have talked about. Like the UK has a lot of horse legends. There's a lot. Like a lot a lot. But ideally it would have been good to go over all of that stuff just because the more time you can spend researching and figuring out what you want to do with a concept, the better. It'll only make your design stronger. And this was just a fun little exercise going over that for myself and just something that I wanted to share with you guys. And I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, then give that like button a boop. I don't know, I'm new to all this YouTube stuff. I don't know how to, you know, do these outro things, but like the video, check out my other stuff. I haven't done a lot of videos like this at all, so like, I have animatics that you can watch if you're into that sort of thing. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, then, you know, let me know in the comments. Let me know which design you like better. And just overall, take care, everybody.